Della from Illigo. Illigo, yeah. Excellent. Okay, I'm bad for pronouncing things. Uh, what about conference sponsors? Thank you very much. Uh, also available at a stand, giving away a bottle of champagne Good. as a prize. And we'll talk about how to get employed. Indeed, yeah. Or how to get headhunted. So the basis of this talk is more around about your CV's gone to a hiring manager. How do we then approach an interview once once that's um, once that once that happens? Because a lot of people fall down on interview stage, um, and this is not the technical side. I'm not going to talk about how you approach technical tests and all that sort of thing. It's more about the the social side and how you can interact with a hiring manager and the non-technical people on the team. So I thought I'd, I'd give you a, a brief overview of who I, who I am to start off with. Now, I'm a, a senior headhunter. I've been, recruit, uh, been a recruiter for about six, seven years. Um, I specialize in open source technology. Um, and by that, I'm including Java, sadly. Um, but as I say, I've been doing technology pretty much five years. And I, I personally have an emphasis on Perl. It's what, I, it's what I've fallen into. It's what I've done for a little bit. But my team and I work on sort of Linux, Unix, Python, PHP, Ruby, et cetera. So we cover the full, full circle in the open source environment. We, we place candidates at, at all levels. And that's very, very junior first line support people right up until your CIOs, your CTOs. So we get a full range of experience working with people. So I think it's always interesting to cover what, what a recruiter actually does. Um, we are not, uh, I'll just clear up the, the myth, we're not evil, we're not here to steal people's money or children or anything, anything along those lines. Can I have my kids back now? You can, you can <laughs> after the conference. Um, so yeah, and what, what I do is I advise and consult um, across the UK, the US and mainland Europe. Um, so for, for our client side of things, we, we offer recruitment on permanent basis, um, contract, temporary basis, and fixed term contract. Um, we, 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 we do what we call search and select. So we, we tend to work with a lot of passive candidates, which are people either like yourselves who are either looking or are, who are potentially open to a new opportunity. Um, and unlike, unlike a lot of... Um, Recruiters, we do qualify our candidates. If you're a if you're a PHP developer, for example, we won't be putting you, we won't be asking you about Java roles or anything like that. Um, and then we book and manage the interview process, which I'll come on to in a second. Um, for 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 you as candidates, what we do is we do CV appraisals. We will never change any of your CVs. We're not one of these agencies that do that. Um, what we do is we say this is the best way to get a hire, this is the best way to approach it on your CV. And then um, we, we look at you to make the changes because a CV is your own words about your experience, not our words. And then we do interview coaching again, which is what we're gonna come on to. We give you insight into the market about salary information. And then we look at the sort of companies that are out there and what you are looking for as a requirement and how, that so, how you meet, meet on the social, uh, sort of company culture type thing. So again, just a brief run through before I get into the main part of the talk. What, what we're going to cover is how to stand out in a competitive market. Um, you'll, see, you'll, you'll, you'll see a lot of stats and lots of people going for interviews at the moment. Um, lots of CVs gone, um, lots of interviews been happening. How do we make sure we're the one that remembered? How do we make sure we're the one that people will come back uh, for a second interview for? So we talk about the differences in the interview process. We talk about how to conduct yourself in a telephone interview, which is kind of the way a lot of first round interviews are done. So um, you will generally speak to a non-technical person, either the internal recruitment manager or HR or something along that, those sort of lines, who will just who will screen you for, is this person going to fit within our business? And then how to conduct a face-to-face -face interview how to deal with once you've received an offer and how to um, deal with counter offers from your current company. <coughs> so standing out in the, obviously I've used this talk before, um, standing out in a um, competitive market, 
Um, you need to make sure you're more than what's written on paper. You need to, uh, you, so when you've sent your CV, you need, uh, the quality of your CV needs to be clear and detailed. So if you've been working 30 years, we don't, we don't need to see that you worked in a pub when you were at university. You need to get rid of all of that sort of stuff. It's more important you put details around projects you've worked on and what you've actually done in, um, in your current job. Um, you need to sort of say, say it's all about the projects you worked on. <coughs> Showcase them. If you've done some stuff in your, your spare time, I uh, attend an open source uh, conference, put it on your CV. It shows, it shows passion. It shows interest. It shows you this is something you actually want to do. Uh, and then we talk about a professional profile or a brand. Um, it's all about uh, a candidate brand, a candidate professional profile. Um, as we all know, the open source community is very small. Most people know each other. So let's make sure our brand is always at the top. How do we do that? Um, do, do, if, you're, if you're passionate about something, you'll blog about something, you'll, you'll, you'll talk about it. So if you're looking for work or you, you think you're going to start looking for work, why don't you start throwing some ideas around on paper or uh, on, online, uh, post some blogs, post some articles you've read that's of interest. Um, do you contribute to any projects outside? Um, are there areas are there areas in which you want to work? The area I cover a lot is dev, so there's a lot of dev projects outside and uh, you can get involved with. Um, LinkedIn profile. Um, a lot of people are now using LinkedIn more than they're using CVs. So a company will receive a, a CV from yourself and then check you out on LinkedIn. One massive thing I would emphasize is make sure your CV matches your LinkedIn profile. It's amazing how many people don't update their, uh, don't update their, their LinkedIn profile or don't have any information on their LinkedIn profile. Again, this all relates back to our professional brand. If we can, if we can show from our, um, our profile our brand, and it's all about that. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Oh, I just want to ask, oh. do you know of any tools that will let you basically sync your LinkedIn profile with your CV? Because I find it a pain. I've, I've changed my CV and that's, oh, I've got to go and change my LinkedIn profile. I've uh, not come across any, but um, yeah, I, 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 I'll have a look and I'll, I'll let you know. But I don't, I don't think there are many. Um, so yeah, uh, it, is, it is a pain to update our, our LinkedIn profile. It's a pain to update our CV in the first place, but then we have to go and do it on, on LinkedIn. What I've, I've put here as well, recommendations, obviously, from people, you've work, uh, people who you've worked for, but this, for me, is more important. If you have a, a peer reference, now what do I mean by peer reference? What I mean by that is you work alongside someone every day doing the same job as them. Uh, you're likely to be doing the same job as them. If they've recommended you, um, you've got to know them on a personal level, you've got to know them on a technical level. Companies take a lot of, um, use that as a, uh, as a real guide to see, oh, this person can fit with our business in a cultural sense. He's, he's so, uh, they're sociable, they deal with, they interact with people quite well. It's a good tool to have references from your colleagues, not, not just um, your recommendations from uh, your, your employers. Now, so are, are we active on social media? Are we, are we tweeting about what we're doing? Are we using various other uh, social media tools, talking about what, um, what we've done and what projects we've done, what, we, what we've read, etc. It all links back to this brand. Um, one thing I would add to that, though, is if there's something about the community or the, uh, anything in the open source community you don't like so much, don't use that as a forum to, to, to have your say um, because, again, it goes back to that brand. An employee will see that blog or see that post and think that's a negative. This person can be a negative influence on our company. So I would avoid as much as possible venting on social media if you're looking for work. Uh, again, as we've mentioned, community events such as this, um, Put it, again, put it on your CV, make sure you go into these, make sure you're interacting with people. They reckon a huge percentage of jobs are met uh, are, are people you know. So you meet people at these sort of events, it's likely to get you ahead of the crowd. 
So the interview process itself, how are interviews working these days? So um, a, lot of technical t a lot of technical tests. Um, what we're doing as a company as well, what a lot of other businesses are doing, are using psychometric slash sort of behavioral analysis. Um, there's, there's been a lot of weight on that at the moment because, again, this is all about the culture fit. And I keep reiterating, this is more about how, how to fit culturally within a business. So p people are, um, are comparing your your sort of psychometric uh, test to um, the hiring managers. Will that person fit in with, with us in the business? Will that person, um, is they, are they socially aware um, to fit within this business? So again, just be aware there's a lot of emphasis put, in that, put on that. They, they, they say you can't actually, you don't actually change your behavior on those sort of uh, analysis since you're, age, since you're the age of 13. They, they, they edit. They edit a little bit when, if, you're in a, if you're in a job that's, that's, that's a bit stale, but generally you're, you're the same, you have the same behavioral um, analysis from when you're 13 upwards to when you're a little bit more senior. Um, again, I've mentioned telephone interviews, vital, vital, vital tool um, that companies are using now. It can, it, it's sometimes technical, very seldom it is a technical assessment. Uh, Often it's in a housekeeping, which, which again is by a non-technical person, which is what you're looking for, salary, etc. And then face-to-face, um, -face, self-explanatory. Um, you, you've all probably had thousands of face-to-face -face interviews in your, in your lives. Um, social interviews are more, uh, are being used a lot more. Going out for drinks with the team, going out for coffee with the team. Again, it's all about seeing how you, how you interact with the other members of the, technical, of the technical team. And then obviously, all being well, we get to offer stage. So, the telephone interview. How do, how, how do, we, um, how do we deal with the telephone interview? Um, it's amazing how many people, however long, however long you've worked for, however technical you are, fall down on this area. Um, it's, um, it, it's, it's a tricky thing to do because it's, you need to treat this like a face-to-face uh, like face -face interview. Um, so you need to prepare for it like a face-to-face -face interview as well. Um, one thing I would stress, location, location, location. I cannot tell you how many times I've had candidates do this in like a cafe, or by the roadside, or even one who decided to do, he knew it was at three o'clock on a Tuesday, Where, where's the best place for me to do this? Yes, on a bus. Um, <laughs> so location is important. If you're working at a company that has conference rooms, book a conference room, do it in there. If you're fortunate enough to have some time, do it at home. Use a landline if people still have landlines. Um, but yeah, make sure you're in a quiet room. Um, be prepared and ready. Um, what do I mean by that? Have your phone charged. Um, it's um, again, it, it, it may sound it may sound basic advice, but you'd be surprised how many people say you have to cut this interview short because my battery is about to run out. Let's make sure we've got a fully charged um, mobile phone. Um, and all other areas to be prepared and ready for are know the job, know what you're applying for, know the company, have some facts about the company, have, um, make sure you've done some research, uh, make sure the recruiter knows the job and he's explained it, uh, they've explained it in detail to you. Um, again, just noting on that, if you ever require more information from a recruiter, just keep pushing back on them until they get it. Because at the end of the day, um, you're, you guys are the ones looking for a job. Make sure the recruiter has fully briefed you on the role. And if they haven't, push back on them. Um, voicemail is important uh, as well. Um, it may happen. You may miss the call for whatever reason. but. I can't imagine I'm still saying this to people not to have sort of 
ghetto or rap music blaring out as a, as a voicemail, it immediately puts people off. Um, just have name, uh, apologies, missed your call, et cetera. Um, you can change back once you've got the job, but um, while you're in the process, let's make sure we've got a clear, concise um, way of doing it. So, um, clear and focused, what do I mean by that? Um, it, it's going to sound very salesy, but then I'm a salesman, so it comes with the territory. Um, when you're speaking to someone on a, on a, on, on a, on a phone, you, get, you sound like you've got more energy, more, um, you're more engaged if you're stood up when you're on the, when you're on the call. Uh, if you're at home and you're sat down uh, in, your, in your sofa, you, it comes across as disengaged. You can hear it in the tone of the voice. Um, so I would always, um, always suggest making sure you're stood up. Um, there's also an old sales technique called, uh, called smile while you dial. Um, again, it, you can hear it in the voice. If someone's smiling when, the, when they're on the phone, you can hear it. You can hear it in the tone of their voice. Um, if you've had a bad day, again, it's not going to work. Um, again, it's all about projecting yourself. It's all about making sure we've, our brand comes across on a call. Um, enthusiasm, uh, yes, it's hard to show enthusiasm if it's like the 35th one you've done, but treat every interview as, um, as the first time you've engaged with this company. It's important to show the enthusiasm. I've already alluded to research, make sure you know the company. Um, ideally, if you know the interviewer, um, if, if, the, if you found out who, who's interviewing, if it's a technical person, look at their LinkedIn profile. And then ask them questions about that. Oh, I see you did X project um, 10 years ago. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Again, it shows you're engaged. It shows you're passionate about what you're doing. Questions, as I've just, uh, just mentioned, make sure you have some. Um, I've, I've, I've had so many candidates get to the end of the, the call and go, OK, thanks. And, <laughs> and then they've, the, the interviewer said, any, any questions? No, 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 you've covered them all. You've covered them all. Make sure you've got some, even if it's about the social side of things or if it's just re-editing what they've said and re reaffirming. Just make sure we've got questions. And then the most important one of all, ensure you get a face-to-face. -face. Again, it's the same process as uh, I explained in a little bit for a face-to-face -face interview, but close, close the interviewer into a into a face-to-face. -face. Um, so how do we do that? We do that by um, asking one simple question do you have any reservations about taking me through to a face-to-face -face interview? At that point, if they say yes, okay, what, what are they? And you can address them. If they say no, when, when's a good time for me, to, uh, for me to come in and see you? Immediately, you've, you've closed them into an interview. They're going to either say yes or no at that point, and you can push to get it on. Always push to do it very quickly because you want to get ahead of the game. So I would, I would always stress, make sure you close at the end of every, every interview stage. So, Joyce, we've got through to our, we got through to our face to face interview. Yes. Um, this kind of crosses both, but I had a telephone interview a few a couple of years ago, and they asked me a technical question, yeah. and I gave the right answer, and they said that's wrong. <laughs> and uh, it's how do you deal with that because you. You don't want to create an antagonistic situation where you're arguing with them, but on yeah. the other hand, you don't want them to think that you don't know the right answer. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it, I just basically didn't say anything. I just said, okay, and we moved on. But it's a really awkward situation. There's, there's two ways, there's, or one, one way you, do, you could deal with that sort of situation, because it does happen, is you can say, okay, but in my opinion, I feel this will be, and then explain the result of whatever, whatever that was. Yeah, it was a factual question, so it was basically what thought was my screen, listen on my default. So there is only one answer. It's not like an opinion or anything, it really is a... But then you have to query whether you want to work for, yeah. for a company yeah. that doesn't... Um, but yeah, it's all about uh, engaging with them as well. And just and then I would, I would have gone back to them on that stage and pushed back on people. Don't be afraid to push back on people. Uh, there's a difference between pushing back and getting into, into an argument. Um, it's my it's my belief that bam and then respond again with it, and it's all because sometimes that could be a test. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah so. well, it was a tricky one. Of, uh, do they actually not know the answer, or are they basically testing? So yeah, so I, I would I say I would stress: don't be afraid to push back, but res resort from getting into a, a full-blown argument with people. <laughs> Also as well, what I've noticed is that um, with LinkedIn, yeah. uh, if you send a CV out to somewhere, you, you often say so-and-so from such and such a company has looked at your profile yeah. online. And the reverse is true as well. So the people are interviewing you say, hmm, yes, they have actually looked because they have notification. Hmm? <coughs> yeah, you, it, it, it's true. You, uh, hiring managers do generally look at um, at, at your, your LinkedIn profile, especially if it's, an in, especially if it's a recruiter like me, yeah, guaranteed I'm going to look at your LinkedIn profile. Um, but a lot of the time hiring managers will then, then will ask questions about it, so make sure you know your LinkedIn profile as well as you know your CV. The downside is they can hide that though. If they've got professional they opinion, can, they yes. can basically hide the fact that you've they've looked at yours. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, so, we've got, um, we've got to our face-to-face interview. So early bird catches the worm, just make sure you're ahead of the game and you arrive on time. Nothing worse than sprinting from the tube station, um, running into the interview, sweat pouring down. It's not a good look. Um, so I, what I would always suggest to my candidates, get to the, get to the air about an hour early. I always go, I, when, I used to interview, when I used to look for work, I used to go where I, and source out where I'd go for lunch. Um, if, if I was to get the job. So wander around the area, make sure you know the area, then turn up about 15 minutes early. Um, what to wear? Um, I, can only t I can only give an example of a developer that I, I, uh, that I had out for interview. And he said to me, um, what, what should I wear for an interview? So I said, smart casual, um, it's always, always good. Um, he said, ah, that's good of you to tell me I was going to turn up in combats and a heavy metal t-shirt. Um, so what, what the people, what, what you actually wear on the, when you're working, it will be different. I appreciate that. But you go in for interview. Again, a lot of the people you'll be, interview, be interviewing with aren't, aren't, um, aren't techies. So you, I've got the, the MD who's likely to be in, a, uh, in business attire. Come, give me one second. Um, or... Um, or internal recruitment, or HR, who again are likely to be in um, business attire. <coughs> it just reminded me that on a number of occasions I've been told, um, which, well, wear whatever you're comfortable with, and it's like, well, you're just, you're just thinking, this is like a trick question. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like you, you, even though I mean, I've sat in by you know, everyone else is in t-shirts, <coughs> and, 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 and like, guys, it was yep. because I'm, I'm, you know, playing it, playing it safe. But I, um, I would, I would always. Um, air on that side, play it safe, because you can always you can you can go turn up to work in your jeans or shorts, whatever it is you wear generally. But yeah, once you got the job, so play it safe at interview. I um, I find it ask, if you ask quite often because I was once told, oh, don't wear a suit. Because yeah. my default is I wear a suit, <coughs> and then unless I'm told otherwise, because the worst case scenario is you're smarter than people are interviewing you, which Take doesn't time, tend to so. go out down too badly. Yeah. I, I never tell my I never tell my 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 people to wear ties, casual, smart casual trousers, shirt or skirt and blouse etc. Um, unless you're going for an interview in a bank, that's a whole different story. Um, so uh, again, be prepared. Same same applies to the telephone interview. Um, again, just like telephone interview, know your CV. I've had so many people trip up in interview because. When the interviewer said, "Oh, in X year you did this," and the, and the candidate sat there going, "Did I?" Um, so just make sure you know what's on your CV as well. Eye contact. Um, again, nothing's worse that you're talking to someone and you're talking like that. Uh, but what they do not want to see the top of your head. Um, keep eye contact at all times. <coughs> Mentally interviewed. Interview is a nerve-wracking thing, but. Keep as much eye contact as impossible. It's more about engaging with them as well. Um, so yeah, um, my favorite one, don't be afraid of silence. Um, quite often, you've answered your question, be it a technical question, be it a social question, whatever that may be, you've answered it. Don't, be a, don't try and fill that gap. 
in between. Uh, why? Because quite often the hiring, the hiring manager will be um, taking in what you've said or maybe thinking about the next question and which to ask. Because um, quite often if you try and fill that gap, you'll babble and end up contradicting yourself. Um, silence isn't a bad thing. Um, obviously, I'm not, asking, I'm not saying don't, don't give one word answers. But so, as soon as you've answered, your, you feel you've answered that question to the best of your ability, um, I, would, I would then stop. Don't try and continue to fill the space because of the silence. Don't worry about it. Exa <coughs> examples and detail. Um, a lot of people are doing competency-based interviews, um, so you'll be asked these questions anyway. But um, once you've, if they ask for your experience with, I don't know, um, puppet or whatever it is you're going for, give example when you've used it. So you say this is uh, this is what I've ex experienced with, and that can be best showcased with X, and then give some some example when you've used it. It just helps. It helps because then they're likely to ask a question about that project, and you can engage further. So always, always example every every answer you give. Um, show your interest again. That that relates back to um, that relates back to knowing um, knowing the company. So look on their website. A lot of companies list what they do um, socially as a team and etc. Ask them about it in, in the interview. Say, well, I saw on your website that you do this on this day, or you have hackathons or whatever it may be. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that? And then it shows you've done your research. It shows you're interested and you're engaged. And um, always the tricky one, know what you're looking for in terms of money. Um, if you want 55K, don't say you'll be happy with 50K because then you're going to get offered 50K. Um, know what you want. Make sure it's realistic. Make sure you've done the, um, the salary survey. Make sure you know what the market rate is and know, know, make sure you know what you want. And don't be afraid to discuss it. Don't be afraid to discuss money. So if you're at final interview stage, the next stage is going to be an offer. Don't be afraid to ask about money. Um, one, just a caveat to that, don't ask about holidays or anything like that. Uh, because again, that, it's not, it shows you're only looking for a job, not a career. Um, talk about, um, but don't be afraid to speak about money. They've asked you about your current salary. Yeah. And then at that stage, are there further questions about what you can offer them? Yeah. Um, I think it's a bit more than that. Yeah. I would say we work on a principle generally move a job, gain five grand. Uh, it's, what, it's, it's, not a, it's not a hard and fast rule, it's just how we generally work, and that's what most people will tend to ask for. Um, yes, let me, let me just explain this one, and I'll take that question. Um, so, yeah, so make sure you, you know that, and when they say what, you look, what you're on, answer that, and then they say what you're looking for. So I'm looking for X and then give reasons why you feel you're, you're worth that and why you feel that that's your value. If you can explain why you feel you're valued at that rate, then there's no argument with it. Yeah. I was just curious. Um, obviously, the only real reason that they would be asking about how much you're getting at the moment yeah. would be to, um, if it's lower than what they would be giving you, they would be going near with that figure than what they were thinking of. Yeah. So, um, is there a diplomatic way to not give that answer or anything like that? No, I, I, I would always stress, if you're asked that question, answer it. Uh, because if you don't answer that question, it sounds like you're hiding something. Um, yeah, give me two seconds. Um, once you, uh, so that's why I said, if you, once you answer that question and then you say, but I'm looking for this, explain why you're worth that. Um, but if, say if you're on such and such, you have benefits and stuff, include all of that, because that all adds up. Um, I was just going to chip in on that. Some employers have um, salary match schemes. So like if you go and work in the public sector, they'll quite often 
a job will be tied to a pay grade and there'll be a range of salaries within that grade. Mm -hmm. And normally you'll start at the bottom, bottom of the grade, but if you can prove that you're already earning midway through the grade, generally their HR policy is we will take you on in the middle of the grade, provided you can prove with a pay slip that you're already on that. Mm -hmm. So it, it is actually, they're not necessarily looking to downgrade you. It, it's quite often they have a HR policy where we'll match your current salary within that, within that pay grade or we'll pay you at the top of the grade if you're already above that, okay. if you're taking a pay cut. Can I ask a question as well? Yep. So I just want this confirmed because I was never quite too sure. If they ask you an interview, um, is there anything else in your books? No, are you up for any other jobs mm -hmm. at the moment? <coughs> I was told by an agency to say no. No, 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 no. Wow. Tell them. That shows Tell them. Like yeah. Demand. yeah, that's right, it shows you're in demand. Um, and then you can. Somebody once said the opposite, and I was like, no, never, never, that. never. Always tell them. Even, even if you haven't got anything out, yeah, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, but put some urgency in the market for them. Make them want you. If they think they're going to lose you to another company, it will make them act quicker. Um, and then, obviously, again, we, we reiterate we've got more questions there. And again, I would ask. Close them, close them, close them at, at interview stage. Again, same question. Are there any reservations what, in, me, in you not offering me this job? And if they say, again, you can address those questions at that stage. Um, if not, hurrah, we've got, we're likely to get the job. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I was just going to say, <clears throat> what if they have like HR policies in place that say that the panel has to make a decision and there's a process and all that sort of stuff? And just gain it from the hiring manager because it's slightly their decision anyway. <laughs> Is the old sort of saying that they've already made their mind up about to after so many seconds mm. of walking in the room and they're just reaffirming that? Yeah. yeah. I think it's like 1.56 seconds they've decided whether they're going to hire the person or not. Um, which, going back to the, the first one, what you wear, always a good thing to do. If you're wearing a suit, when, when reception say, have a seat, don't sit down. Because as soon as you sit down, your suit gets creased. Always stand up, because most people will look at you when, you when they meet you for the first time, will look at you and look up that way. If you stood up, you, there's no creases on you. You look much more professional. Um, so just a bit of tab there. So great news. We've got our offer. Um, what do we do next? Um, so always ask the question, how long do I have? Uh, in, in making a decision. If you want the job straight away, take it. Um, but what, what timeline are you working to? I would suggest not to, not to wait a week or two, because it shows you're not interested, it shows you're just waiting for other things. Um, two or three days, always a bonus. If it's on a Friday, it's even better. You can take the weekend and, and accept on a Tuesday. Um, but yeah, I would always say, take it two or three days. Don't make any snap decisions. Make sure this is the decision right for you. Unless you're, unless you're one of my candidates and take it straight away. Um, but, but no, on a serious note, um, yeah, take a couple of days. Uh, what else you got going on, like we were saying earlier? Um, tell them. I've got other opportunities out there. Nine to, if they say to you, oh, unless you take this on this day, we're going to pull the offer. One, do you really want to work for that company who puts that pressure on you? And two, they've offered you, they've put their cards on the table, they will wait. They may not wait a week or two, but they will wait a couple of days. Never let an agency say they're demanding an answer. Never going to happen. Um, be confident, don't be bullied by an agency or an employer. Like I was saying, don't, 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 when, when they say to you, you've got this amount of time, okay, take that amount of time. Don't be pressured into making a decision because you're only going to move again if you're not happy at the job. Negotiation, it's hard to negotiate once they've already put the offer to you, which is why we talk about money at the, ne the, the, the stage before, but just be aware of that. Make sure you know what you want from them as well. Sometimes you get low-balled at the uh, uh, offer stage. If you don't want that amount of money, go back to them and say, I, I really feel I'm worth this because X, Y, and Z, and always, make a, always show in sort of examples why you're worth a certain amount of money and make sure it's realistic. Other questions, do you have all 
the um, one second, let me just flip through this. Um, make sure you have all the information, i.e. how many holidays, this is when you can ask about holidays. What's the pension scheme? What, 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 how, many, um, how many days off for social engagements like tech conferences and stuff you get, etc. It's the best time to ask that. Then you either accept or decline. If you decline, remember your brand. If you, if you mess around a company, they're going to remember that. If they become a hiring manager somewhere else, you're not likely to get the job because you mess them around a lot. If you turn it down, you turn it down, but just make sure you do it in the correct manner. Yes, I think we had a question. Uh, <clears throat> so you were, you were saying about not being afraid about talking about money. So in, in the yep. previous yep. step, the face face interview, so presumably are you, are you <coughs> suggesting that if they don't bring it up by the end of the interview, you should bring it up? If you're going for a recruiter, then no. If you're on your own, then I would. If they, if they bring the money up and you're going for a recruiter, the recruiter will tell you, oh, don't talk about money, we're talking about money, and all that sort of thing. It's rubbish. Um, be, be open, talk about it. But no, I wouldn't raise it. If, you, if, you, if, you're going on, if you're going through direct, then yes. But if you're going through a recruiter, then don't bother, because the recruiter can do that for you. Um, so we've been off the job. We've accepted it. Um, you tell your boss, I'm leaving. They say, oh, no, we, we really want you to stay. Here's another 10 grand. Um, how do we deal with that situation? Ask yourself, why were you looking in the first place? Was it really, really the money you were looking for? Or was it, don't like the technical stack, don't like the people I work with, et cetera, because that's not going to change if you have enough 10 grand. Um, so make sure, make sure you know why you were looking in the first place. And I'm going to dispel a recruitment myth. 97% of people do not look for work again in six months if they take a counter offer. It's not true. Every recruiter will tell you that. It's not true. Um, and um, so... If you set, set to counter offer, make sure it's for the right reason. Don't take it just for the money because that's not the reason you were looking in the first place. There are underlying issues to it. Um, again, why is it, why is it taking you to resign to get that extra 10 grand? Oh, we've always had it in the budget. So why is it, if you've always had it in the budget, why have you not offered it to, to me six months ago when I asked for it? Um, so remember, um, and again, what does... How, how do, how, why does it take, again, it's why does it take you to accept a new job for this all to come about? And again, um, the world isn't going to end if you accept a counter offer. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, no one's going to die. Nothing, nothing that's, that's going to happen. Um, but just make sure it's for the right reason is what I want to stress. And make sure you remember your professional profile. If you take a counter offer, remember the person you were going to work for Make sure they know it's for the right reasons as well. So again, it's all about your profile. Just always remember, in a small community, always remember your brand at every stage. Um, we're going to skip that one. Um, and yeah, we've got 10 minutes. So let's move to, let's move to more questions. We've had questions throughout. Any, any, anyone, I'm always happy to, to do this. Anyone disagree with what I've said in any, any, anything? Anyone have any concerns? We did have a question there, and I'll come to you. <coughs> question? Thank you. I was going to say, you're talking about being prepared. And yeah. One of the things I noticed is that a good headset, the boom microphone, and practicing not blowing in the microphone, <laughs> and not being a heavy breather, and not eating, would yeah. be great. It's such a difference. Yeah. I work with other stuff and do this all the time. <laughs> and then a question for you, which is that I kind of got three gigs in the <laughs> which didn't make me happy. Yeah. Um, one of them was going into a data center where they maxed out the power. Yeah. Another one, they kind of stopped ships on the product because of an application change in the UI. And then a, a third one, for the love of God, where um, essentially the product sucked. And I probably should have asked for new power. But yeah. I wondered if there's anything you could help me with to interview the interviewer. Yeah, um, you'll find um, a lot of interviewers don't know how to interview. They don't have training on how to interview someone. So they don't ask the right questions. So what I would say in that situation is make sure everything you need to know, you know at that point. If they haven't asked you, so um, you go through it. So tell me about the product. Tell me what, what's, what, why, why is this product so good? Um, what, what it, what's the selling point about this company, uh, about this product? Always a good question to ask as well. Why did they join the company? They may have joined seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. Why did they join it? Was it the, was it the project? If they joined ten years ago because of the product, probably a very good product. Um, or they're not very good, one of the two. Um, 
But no, on a serious note, again, yeah, I, don't be afraid to keep asking them questions. It's important to have those questions and just keep asking them. If you don't feel you've got your information, keep asking. Uh, we've got one here, then I'll come to you. Okay. Um, just a tip on that as well, I'd say um, ask why the positions become available. Because yep. if it's, oh, you know, our senior dev position is available because all our senior devs have resigned, <laughs> probably not a good thing. Um, but the question I wanted to ask was, how do you deal with a situation, particularly when you deal with a recruiter? Yep. Um, I had this where I basically I went to the interview, so I'd had a telephone interview, they didn't really impress me that much. Went for a face-to-face, -face, and it was just appalling. <laughs> Um, they just left me hanging around and all sorts of stuff and took me to Burger King for lunch and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really, doesn't really impress you. But I was quite blunt with the recruiter. Yeah. And she was, I don't know how much of that she passed on in terms of professional profile. But I was wondering how, how honest should you be? I mean, I basically said, the interview process is just as much about me interviewing them. It is, yeah. And they basically failed. Mm -hmm. Um, and she came back and said, oh, well, look, he's a really good guy, the technical director, and once you get to know him, he's great and everything. And I sort of said, well, you've only got one chance to make a first impression. This is true. And I, I, but I wasn't sure how blunt to be. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't too bothered about upsetting her. I know she was annoyed because she was missing a commission, yeah. basically. I, I would say you can be blunter with the recruiter because the re recruiter will filter the, the information back. Um, be careful about being overly blunt, uh, blunt with an employer. Um, just say, I had issue with X, Y, and Z. I wouldn't tear them apart or anything like that. I just, just we can filter what, we, what, what goes back is what I would say to that. It's kind of a legal question. It worked out in the end. Okay. But I went for an interview, <coughs> got the job, <coughs> handed my notice in, and it was over Christmas. So I was off anyway, about to start in a few days' time, and then I got the email saying, sorry, we've run out of money, we can't take you on board now. Yeah. And I'd already left the other job. As it was, I ended up working for them, they found the money and they took me on, and I stayed there for a few years. But my argument was, <coughs> what is your situation there? To be honest, I don't want to even answer that because I don't know the, the, the legalities behind it. It does happen. I've had it happen to a couple of candidates before. Um, again, this is why we remember our professional profile once we've left the company. Because if we can go back to the, our last one, if it's an option, it's not always an option. But yeah, it does happen. And I don't want to give it a legal, uh, a, a legal answer on that because I don't know yeah. the, the contract. Or, unfortunately. Sign the contract, then that's binding on them, ultimately. That's why I always ask for a written contract. I don't accept an offer until I've got it in writing. Well, isn't, the, no, isn't the notice <coughs> period on a new contract often like one week or something, in which case so yeah, they I mean, they, to keep you for one week? Yes, I mean. they could do that. They could pull that sort of fast trick on you. But ultimately, you could, you could enforce that contract ultimately through the courts. If you, but if they've not got the money, then you're probably not going to get yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. But, but legally, you could, en you could enforce them. You could either get them what's called specific performance, where you basically enforce them to honour the contract, yeah. Or you can, there's a financial penalty mm -hmm. and they have to yes. basically yeah, yeah. sue them for money. So there's, there's two options. Stuff. Presumably, work would get around though, and then people would. I don't know. I mean, in theory, you should be entitled to your rights, but I mean. <laughs> I don't think that's bad. Let the work get around. They stitched you. Right? Yeah, I, yeah I mean, you don't. I told everybody. You don't want to deal with a company that basically will. will renege on contracts. And yeah. If you get a bit of a reputation for, you insist on, you know, if somebody tries to pull the rug from under you, you'll enforce your rights. If companies are put off by that, do you really want to work for a company yeah. that's put off by that? I would always ask, I, that's the, the response. If, if there is something you don't like, do you really want to work for that company? Again, that's what goes back to when you're being pressurised into taking a job. Um, if you're being pressurised into something, do you really want to work for that company? Are you really going to be happy? Because likely, if, they're pressure, if the hiring manager, for example, is pressuring you to take it, what, what pressure are they going to put on you once you've taken it? So are you going to hit the, how much pressure are they going to put on you to hit deadlines and stuff? So yeah, it's, it is important to do that. Yeah. You talked a lot about LinkedIn and things like that. Um, yeah. And I, I always kind of assume that people will end up looking at your Twitter profile and your GitHub profile yeah. and things. <coughs> 
Firstly, are there any, uh, any things that aren't particularly obvious that people would be looking for? But also, if you don't exist on GitHub, if you don't exist on Twitter, does that count against you in any way? Uh, yes and no. Let's answer, I'll answer the second one first. Yes and no. Um, it's not, they're not, not going to hire you because you don't have a GitHub account or you don't have a, a, a LinkedIn account. They're not, not going to hire you on that basis. It's just not going to be, you're not going to be first choice because technically you might be, uh, but a lot of these screen, initial screens have to get through HR people who look for that type of thing. Um, but no, it's not the end of the world if you don't have one, but it just doesn't go, but if we go back to the passion side of things earlier, it doesn't emphasize you have passion f for what you do. You may well do. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying anyone who doesn't have a LinkedIn profile isn't passionate about what they do. It's just not obvious to the wider, the wider world. And sorry, the first question was? Are there any less obvious things that you'd recommend people exist on? Um, no, not so much. I would obviously say the same ones. Uh, the, the basic ones are the have a GitHub account, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, etc. I wouldn't say that. If you want to work in the European market, get on, get on Zing. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's any less obvious ones. That's time if there's one more question. Oh, OK, I was going to say, um, uh, you mentioned I think about having a GitHub profile and stuff. Yep. Obviously, there's a lot of sysadmins here. Yep. And I mean, obviously, configuration is code. I mean, there's a lot more stuff we can put out there. But what do you do if you, you, know, you don't work on a local software at work and your job is, is sort of what you want to showcase isn't I can code so it's I can run infrastructure. I mean, what do you, how do you? Um, um, OK, if, if what you, your job doesn't allow you to do that, do some stuff in your spare time, I would say. Um, use, use, your, use your spare time to, to showcase what you can do. Again, it's all about building that profile. If you can't do it because you're under an, an NDA, do it in your spare time. I think we're, I think we're done. Thank you very much.